So this massive college admission scandal, 50 people facing charges and more arrests are likely in the weeks and months ahead. Actresses Lori Loughlin and Felicity Huffman are two of the dozens of wealthy parents accused in the alleged scheme. Prosecutors say that some of them paid millions to get their children into elite schools like Yale, Stanford and the University of Southern California. The universities claim that they are victims. Now, Chris uh, Quintana is the education reporter for USA Today and joins us now from Washington. Chris, boy, we have been waiting to talk to you because this is your wheelhouse. Um, so, very curious, uh, give us some of your insight into what kind of actions were allegedly taken by these people. You know, what was your take on this case when you heard it? Yeah, thank you for asking and thank you for having me this morning. Uh, when I first saw the details of this case coming out yesterday morning, I uh, knew it was going to be a big one. There are a lot of concerns about the way that college admissions work, uh, and this plays into all of them. This is the rich getting into elite institutions that maybe they don't uh, deserve to be in uh, <laughs> when we're talking about a meritocracy. Mm -hmm. This ties into athletics. This ties into concerns of, of, you know, who's allowed to go where. It just seemed obvious to me that it was going to be a very big story from the get-go. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the uh, points that the officials made yesterday when they were announcing the charges and you know one of the FBI agents said you know this isn't just a parent donating a building to the university in the hopes that their son or daughter will get a better look at the admissions process or through the admissions process um, but I wonder how different is it if you give 10 million dollars to a school and or you donate a building uh, isn't that it's not against the law to do that it's not against the law to donate that money and then get preferable or favorable treatment for your son or daughter but isn't this sort of morally the same thing well, so yeah, yes and no. When the the lawsuit actually, or the affid criminal affidavit actually talks about, or Singer, the the man involved at the the center of this controversy, talks about this. He talks about the back door where you might be a legacy admission, you might be able to donate a lot of money, but that's not always a sure thing. What Singer was offering these people was a sure way, or what he described as a sure way, uh, as a side door into these colleges. You know, going through. Uh, faking credentials, faking academic scores. I mean, what's so different here is the brazenness of the willingness to, to game the system. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they took advantage of ACT and SAT testing policies by saying that, you know, they're, they're, or they would say, they would tell their parents, get them to, get, get your child labeled with a learning disability. And if you do that, then we have extra time to take the test. And then if we have extra time to take the test, we can then get to a separate location to take the test. And then that's where they had people in place to help out students with the test or actually physically take the test for them in some scenarios. Other, in other cases, they would revise the test afterwards to correct the answer. So, um, you know, to, to get back to your original question, it's just so brazen. It's so clear that this yeah. is wrong, um, but it's not that different from the world of, of college ad admissions uh, painted wide. You know, Chris, I do have sort of a take on that because I've heard a lot of people use the Jared Kushner example mm -hmm. and the it was yeah, it $1.2 million mm -hmm. donated. And my take on that is when it comes to, you know, you, you mentioned a meritocracy and it certainly sort of flies in the face of that concept. But at the very least, that $1.2 million will be enjoyed by the other students who are at that school. In this case, what is alleged is just pure greed mm -hmm. and selfishness, and the money is not shared amongst the other students. You know, $1 million can go a long way in terms of a scholarship. Right. You never know. Um, but I want to ask you just about the details of this case, Chris. The schools are saying they're victims as well in this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I, victims might be too strong of a word. I mean, they certainly were were taken advantage of in a way. I mean, and and when you talk about where the bribes were going, a lot of in in most cases they were going to the coaches, right, or or individual people. They weren't necessarily benefiting the university programs as a whole. Um, they're certainly suffering because credit their credibility or their credibility is taking a hit here. You know, it, it, it's hard for. Uh, you know, lower uh, moderate income students to to look at a college and. and I think this thing really does damage to their reputation, mm -hmm. but I think they also need to look at themselves and ask, how did this happen? And and I think the question or, or the answer is is that there's just not a lot of oversight with these uh, athletic, these smaller athletic programs. You know, there's a lot of attention paid to basketball and football. You know, revenue or even earning programs, but smaller programs like tennis or crew or lacrosse, like the ones that we, were, were mentioned in the affidavit, those tend to be um, you know less scrutinized. And I think. Um, 
you know, there, there's going to have to be some kind of reckoning with that. Mm. You, know, you know, Chris, the other issue, of course, is that uh, in this country, there's been a very robust discussion around affirmative action and universities. Uh, and one of the things the officials yesterday said also was that for every seat that was taken by these individuals who bought their way illegally into these universities, a legitimate student was not able to get admission into one of those schools. Uh, and that discussion around affirmative action, you will find a lot of people who will have very wealthy parents who pull strings to get their kids into schools who will then turn around and say, well, people shouldn't get something for nothing. You know, you shouldn't get in to university just because of your race or your ethnicity. And that's another, is that, in your reporting, have you found uh, that that is just another reason why affirmative action in many instances is still needed in this country? Well, I think you, you see a lot of people re renewing that discussion in, 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 <laughs> after this co big college admissions scandal. You know, it, it doesn't feel fair that the, the hyper-rich can buy their way into university. And when you see um, people, people of color, uh, this is something that I, I saw a lot of on Twitter yesterday. They shared a lot of experiences where uh, their white peers would ask them, or would tell them something like, well, well, you're black, you're for sure going to get into, you know, a, a great school. And, and I think this, this controversy shows that's not not necessarily the case. I, I think there is, uh, you know, when you look at the the makeup of who goes where, uh, both socioeconomically and and by race, it's still not uh, equitable. And, and I think we're, it's it's going to be an ongoing discussion for a while. It is yes. a it is a great point. And you mm -hmm. know, when it comes to these uh, programs to get minorities into schools, they're not talking about people who can't pass the test, right. who get low grades. I mean, these people are perfectly qualified yeah. to get into these schools. So this whole bribery allegation is a completely different argument. Uh, Correct. It, it just shakes our, it shakes people's trust in, in higher education for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chris Quintana, uh, thank you very much for your reporting. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. If